Yo, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Neutron tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set up external triggers for the internal side chaining in Neutron. Along the way we're going to look at the track assistant inside of Neutron and we're also going to be using the masking feature to help us figure out where we should be adding the dynamic EQ that will be side chained to the drum pattern. But let's just go ahead and get started. I've just got uh, two tracks here essentially. I've got a drum loop and a bass loop. And this other track is just the same drum loop duplicated. And the reason why is when we set up the external source, we're going to be using the drum loop. And when we do that, whatever channel we use to send to the neutron on the bass track will be muted. So if you're using the drum pattern that is from your track, you're going to want to duplicate it because the one you're using for the trigger will actually be muted and you won't be able to hear it in the track. So I'm going to show you what that's all about. I'm going to drop the neutron equalizer on the drums, re rename it EQ drums. And it's a good idea when using neutron to name all of the instances. I'm going to drop the mothership on the bass track. The reason why you want to rename stuff is because when you get further along in a track and you've got multiple instances of Neutron and you want to have them communicate, it's much easier if you have them labeled properly. So I'm going to Neutron Base. Great. And the first thing I want to do is set up the routing so I can get this external signal into this instance of Neutron on the bass track. And the way to do that is the Audio 2 section right here. I'm going to go Audio 2 Base. And from the second drop down, I'm just going to select Neutron. And now what if I play all three of these tracks? You'll notice that the drums aren't duplicated. And when if I solo this drum track, we're actually going to hear the bass track. So that just tells me that everything is working right. If this audio is being fed into Neutron over here, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and open up Neutron on the bass channel. And I'm going to go ahead and run the track assistant just because, you know what I'm saying? Great. Uh, I'm not going to go into the compressor of the exciter to see what the track assistant did for that, but it sounds a little bit better, so we're just going to keep it and move on. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on masking because, like I said, I want to add a dynamic EQ and have it side chained to our drum pattern, but where I'm going to place that dynamic EQ will have to do with where the masking feature tells us there's some conflict, some frequency conflict. So I'm going to go ahead and hit masking. From the masking drop down, I'm going to EQ drums, and I'm going to go ahead and play them, and Neutron's going to show me where there are some conflicts. Okay, so I've got some conflicts right around here. So that means I can add a EQ node to the bass. And if I click this little arrow, I can get my uh, controls for that node. And I'm just going to bring it over while I'm running it and get it lined up. I'm also going to turn the gain all the way down just for a minute so I can try to get rid of those masking lines. And that way I know that my EQ node is in the right spot. So I'm going to adjust my frequency. I'm going to leave the gain at negative 30 for now, and I'm going to adjust the Q just so I can get rid of some of that frequency mess that is being shown by the masking feature. Okay, so now you can see that it's pretty much gone away. There's also a little bit of mess down here, but we're not gonna we're not gonna focus on that for right now. However, that is completely gone away because I have the gain at negative 30 dB. And if I bypass the neutron, you'll hear a big difference in the sub end. So it's actually getting rid of too much. That's why we're going to just bring it back up like this. I'm actually going to turn the cue up a little bit more focused. 
And let's see what that's like now. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now what I want to do is make that EQ node a dynamic node. So I'm going to click the dynamic mode button over here. We're going to use it to compress and we're going to turn on the sidechain feature and we're going to go from external full, which just means I'm going to use the full spectrum of the drums to trigger the dynamic EQ. So that's pretty good. Uh, you can see that the masking columns up here are actually much smaller than they were before. And now that I have my gain knob set, I'm gonna pull it up around here, I can adjust the threshold, which will adjust how much the dynamic EQ is triggered when the drums are hit. And that's gonna be your best bet to decide how much of that sub low end of the bass you're gonna get rid of while the drum kicks are happening. So that sounds a lot better. I really just wanted to show you how to get the external sidechain going on, but I figured we'd use a real world example and kind of a workflow that I might use when using Neutron on a bass and on some drums. But I like the way what it's done here. It hasn't done too much in terms of overall appearance, but it has made things play a lot nicer together, especially that kick drum is more pronounced and I don't need to add anything to the kick drum. I've actually made it more apparent in the mix without having to degradate the bass too much. I mean, I am taking away that just a tiny bit of that sub, but only when the kick is happening. So the kick is taking focus at that point. So taking away a little bit of that sub low end of the bass, but it's really helped me make the kick have some breathing space. And that means that in the mastering stage or in the final mixing stage, I can pull up some of these gains pull up some of the volumes on these things without having to worry about that frequency spectrum getting too muddied up by having those competing frequencies. Uh, having the dynamic EQ as a side chain is much, much better than just putting a compressor on it and getting rid of the whole stereo field. That works for some things like EDM where it wants that pumping sound that really works to do it for the whole thing. But something like this where you wanna be mixing and getting things perfect, this is really precision based stuff. You know in Ableton Live I've made frequency splitting compressor racks where I can side chain just the, the really low end. But even that is still really getting rid of a lot and it's less precise than this this method here. So I highly recommend it. I wanted to share it with you. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.